quenal atresia quenal atresia is a very important topic from entrance point of view quenna means quenna of the nose and atresia means absence of complete lumen formation so quenal atresia the first thing that you need to remember is it is the most common congenital anomaly of the nose the children will have a normal looking opening present bilaterally the nose will be normal but the air flow through the nasal passage may be interrupted because there will be an obstruction present in the nasal passage at the level of coenae that is called as coenal atresia coenal atresia can be of two types it can be either unilateral which is more common and but usually mild in nature and second is bilateral coenal atresia which is rare but also found to be more severe in nature coenal atresia is more common in females as compared to males almost twice females are more commonly affected than males coenal atresia is commonly associated with certain syndromes so what are the common associations the first common association is charge syndrome it is a very frequent association among all these syndromes so if question asks you what is the most common syndromic association that is charge syndrome if question asks you what is the full form of charge c stands for coloboma of the eye h stands for heart disease a stands for atresia of the coenae that is coenal atresia r stands for retardation of growth as well as retardation of cns development g stands for genitourinary malformations and e stands for ear anomalies many patients of charge syndrome they show autosomal dominant inheritance and they may have abnormalities in chd7 gene charge syndrome is also associated with 22q deletion syndrome which is nothing but dijot syndrome so they may also show association so these are all cross associations which can be asked in entrance exam so the most common syndromic association with coenal atresia is charge syndrome other syndromes which can be associated they include trickers collins syndrome it can also be seen in fever syndrome there is a huge list but the important ones the tricky ones are the ones with that you need to remember and finally some of them may be associated with tracheoesophageal fistula as well which is found to be a relatively rare association so these are the associations now what exactly is coenal atresia what is happening here if we look at the nasal cavity this is your nasal passage right children who have coenal atresia they will have a septum they will have a septum present somewhere over here so there will be a septal block which will occlude the lumen so that any air which is moving from here cannot go into the nasal cavity and so there will be no air flow occurring across this point so due to this block this septum the atresia happens that is called as coenal atresia this septum is found to be responsible for producing coenal atresia now remember that this septum can either be bony or it can be membranous bony septum is seen in 90% cases and membranous septum is seen in 10% cases many children are found to have a combination of the two as well uh, if somebody asks you which is more common bony septum is more common there are many theories why this septum happens uh, there are two theories that you need to remember first theory says that there is persistence of buccopharyngeal membrane which normally disappears that persists so it causes coenal atresia second theory says there is failure of rupture of oronasal membrane 
there are, so these are the two theories why coenal atresia happens coenal atresia can be apparent from anterior rhinoscopic examination or sometimes you may require a proper anterior rhinoscopy and ct scan to identify depending upon how long is the septum and whether it is visible from the outside or not so this is one photograph that that is showing if you can see this part is patent this part is patent but this part is showing atresia so this is an example of unilateral coanal atresia so this photograph is showing atresia occurring in this part the other part you can see that the black color that nasal passage is normally patent now coming to the clinical features how will the children manifest it it really depends upon the type of coanal atresia the unilateral coanal atresia is often missed and presents beyond infancy it usually becomes manifest whenever there is a upper respiratory infection so uri will lead to precipitates clinical manifestations otherwise it may often be missed whereas bilateral coanal atresia it presents in the neonatal period what is bilateral coanal atresia both side there is no air flow so the child will develop cyanosis bilateral presents with a classical abnormality called as cyclic cyanosis potential mcq question will ask you which is the condition associated with cyclic cyanosis the answer is bilateral coanal atresia why see imagine a child newborn he is a obligatory nose breather so he cannot open his mouth to breathe now both sides there is atresia so there will be little to no air flow to to the lungs so the child will develop cyanosis when child develops cyanosis there will be irritation child will be hypoxic and he will start crying when the child will open his mouth to cry intermittently air will start moving from the mouth now because the child is crying he is not opening his mouth uh, voluntarily the child is opening mouth due to crying and when air will move through the mouth cyanosis will come down so cyanosis will come at rest and will disappear when the child is crying this is called as cyclical cyanosis so what is cyclic cyanosis cyanosis appears in newborn at rest but improves or disappears when cries such cycles are seen in a newborn we call it as cyclic cyanosis plus they will also interfere with feeding with the child because whenever the child will try to feed there will again be obstruction and during sucking movement there no absence of air flow will cause worsening of cyanosis during feeding and so the child it will overall interfere with the feeding pattern of the child it is considered to be a emergency if diagnosed in the neonatal period how will you make the diagnosis diagnosis can be made by anterior rhinoscopy but remember that ct scan is mandatory before performing surgery in the patient before you are considering surgery what is the treatment of coanal atresia unilateral coanal atresia usually requires a planned surgery in the childhood you need not do it if you diagnose early you need not do it in infancy whereas bilateral coanal atresia will require initial urgent oral airway placement so you will place a oral airway if that fails very often you will find that these children require either intubation or tracheotomy and then you need to perform surgery in the neonatal period itself surgery is usually done in the first 3 months of life the problem with uh, coenal atresia is particularly surgical operation operation is there is a problem of post operative strictures or restenosis that is why we delay surgery as much as possible lekin bilateral mein we don't have an option so post operative strictures or restenosis is one of the common complication potential mcq post operative strictures or restenosis can be decreased 
by application of agent called as mitomycin C, although the results are conflicting. Some studies show it is a good uh, response, some say uh, uh, it is not significant enough. But remember that mitomycin C, Nelson also says it is one of the drugs which can decrease the chances of restenosis and granulation tissue formation. So, this is all you need to remember regarding coanal atresia.